What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're featuring 10 very specific fragrances. So all 10 of these were featured in a few shorts videos here in the last day or so. And, uh, you know, smelling them got me thinking, damn, they smell good. You know, just great everyday wares that smell amazing for different seasons, some year round. And I thought, you know what, let's put them all together and let's do a video talking about 10 of the best smelling fragrances for men that you can get. I mean, we're talking designers. There's a few niche in here. But the bottom line, they all smell really damn good. So stay tuned. Starting with one that I haven't spent time with in a little while, and it's going on the rotation table. It's that time of year. It's a lot of people's preferred way to smell like Ambroxan. It's kind of like Sauvage, but much smoother. We're talking about Prada Luna Rosa Carbon. I'm sure this will be in the thumbnail, because... This is still a banger. This is still fantastic. Has that metallic, slightly dark and herbal, earthy feel to it in the dry down. The lavender here is just so smooth. It's a little soapy. There's a soft powdery tone. Still has some of that shower gel feel to it. Bright citrus. I believe it's bergamot that's in here. Like I said, it smells very similar to Sauvage, but better. It's, like I said, smoother, more refined, not as scratchy and screechy in the top. Doesn't smell as chemically synthetic. It smells like a higher quality take in many ways. And it's mainly due to the way Prada does lavender when it comes to soapy fragrances. I've said this so many times. Nobody does it like lavender, especially from the designer market. And this one's fantastic. You will go nose blind to this one. You'll think it's on the weaker side. You'll pass by somebody seven or eight hours in to your day and potentially get a compliment. That's happened to me on numerous occasions in the past with this fragrance. Uh, very crowd pleasing, super versatile. You can wear it anytime, year round. It's just a great fragrance. It smells fantastic. We're talking about Prada Luna Rosa Carbon. This next one is my personal favorite flanker in this line. And over the years, there have been countless flankers of this fragrance. Here it's done right. This is Armani Code Eau de Parfum. It definitely smells like a higher oil concentration version of the original. It's not quite as dark and spicy as the original. Like an, It doesn't have a hefty star anise type of dose and spicy smell to it. Uh, it doesn't have really much of that licorice vibe that the original is known for, but definitely features that signature Tonka Bean Absolute. Beautiful, rich, sweet, powdery tone. My wife, oh, that's beautiful, is a huge fan of this one, as am I. We both... We both agree this is our favorite version of Code over the Parfum, over Profumo, which used to be my favorite before I got this. Now Profumo's number two, Parfum's number three, and I have Colonia and A-List and so on and so on. I have several of them, and they're all really good fragrances in their own right, but if I had to just pick one just based on how it smells, even though it is a great performer, but take performance out of it and just look at how it smells for me and my wife, this is the best version of Code. It's going to be hard to top if you like Tonka Bean based fragrances, that sweet powdery tone, when it comes to designers, there's not too many that have a better Tonka Bean note than the Armani Code line. So definitely one of the best smelling fragrances out there for men. It's gorgeous. Definitely try this one. It's Armani Code Eau de Parfum. It can still be found from many, many places online for a decent price below retail. It's still the king of the Aqua de Gel Mountain. It's Aqua de Gel Profumo. This one's been hyped to death over the years and for good reason. It's beautiful. It is the ultimate version of the scent. And most of them are really, really good. All of them are good, in my opinion. The original still smells great. It's timeless. Profondo is the bluest of the blue when it comes to the scent DNA. Profondo Light's a nice green take. Absolute, super underrated, fruity take, and so on. There's really good fragrances in this line. The EDP smells really good. But... For me, Profumo, I think it's the dark nuances, that earthy patchouli, that smoky incense with just incredible performance make this one the king of the Aqua de Gel Mountain, in my opinion. Compliment getter, versatile, slightly dressier take, more of an upscale version of the scent profile. So if you've always been a fan of the scent profile and you want kind of that night out take on the DNA, this is definitely the one. Great daily wear, year-round, works in the heat, works in the cold, strong enough without being too strong, fresh enough without being light. It really is like one of the most well-composed designer fragrances for men of all time. I'll argue with anybody about that. It's cream of the crop. It's great stuff. It still smells amazing to this day. It is Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Gio Profumo. 
Now everybody's got a different answer for which one smells the best of the three concentrations currently available on the market at the recording of this Chanel. We need an elixir version. Hint, hint, wink, wink. I'm talking about Bleu de Chanel Parfum. This is my personal favorite version of the scent. It's the most warm, rich, and refined of them. Still has a beautiful citrus top with this lemon note, but it's all about warm, soft, slightly resinous toned woods. This is just immaculate. Best blue fragrance ever created. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's the best blue fragrance on the market. It's one of the priciest blue fragrances on the market. And will you be okay with the other versions? Of course, the other versions is, are what laid the groundwork for this one to come out. This came out in like 2018, I want to say. We haven't seen another addition to Blue de Chanel in five years at this point. Um, Chanel needs to bring us the Elixir Flanker because that's kind of been a popular thing in the last two years. Sauvage Elixir is great. Women Elixir is great and so on and so forth. Lamal Elixir is coming. I'm sure it's going to be great. The Elixir Flankers have been great. But I have a feeling if they were to do it for this fragrance, it would be the best one of all. Because honestly, when it comes to the designer parfum flankers, especially the blues, this is the standard. This is the best smelling one for me personally. Performance is great. It's exactly what it needs to be for this scent profile. It's not loud. It's not real strong projection, but it lasts a really long time. It's a slightly heavier wear. It's very warm. But it's not too much even in the high humidity Houston heat. That was when I first got this when I lived in the Houston, Texas area. It's just a gorgeous scent profile. No matter how you slice it, it just smells incredible. You know, it's Bleu de Chanel Parfum. Now, this one's a mass appealing niche fragrance. Uh, very mass appealing. It's, it was a unique DNA when it came out. It's been very cloned at this point. But, I don't know, none of them make me feel as good as when I put the original on. And we're talking about Parfums de Marley Layton. This has been a hype beast over the years for many reasons. It's a fruity apple smell, nice warm and spicy tone, creamy vanilla, has this menthol geranium tone to it. This is so good. In fact, I think, I think the day that this video goes live, this is gonna be my scent of the day. I haven't wore this one in a little while and I've been smelling it the last day or two since I pulled it out of its box to feature it in some content. It's just so damn good, guys. If you've yet to get your nose on this one, you're missing out. And if you've smelled clones of it, whether it be cheap Middle Eastern clones, your Detour Noirs, or your Alexandria version, Royal Equestrian, there's countless, tons of houses have cloned this fragrance. Smell the original. Smell the original. Look, out in the air, the clones might be fine for you, but the wearing experience for yourself personally, it's going to be hard to argue with me over this being the better wearing experience of the original versus any clone that smells like Layton. It's just my opinion to each their own. Everybody feels a certain way, but if you haven't smelled this DNA before, you really should smell the authentic original Layton first. Don't start with a clone. If you decide you want to go that route after, go that route after, but try the original first so you can get the ultimate experience of the scent profile and then make your decision from there if price is gonna factor in for you and so on. Cause this is a magnificent DNA. It's super popular over the years for many, many reasons, but most notably, cause it just smells so damn good. Again, it's Parfums de Marley, Layton. Here we have our second Prada fragrance in the video. I actually sprayed this on my arm last night. I need to uh, get this one back in the rotation. This one really makes me happy every time I smell it. This is the fragrance that made me fall in love with Iris. Though it's a very soapy Iris, uh, it made me want to explore the note both designer and niche takes on the, the fragrance oil. This is the one that sparked the love for me. We're talking about Prada Lone. This is everything you've ever heard of it that's positive. I agree with. Now, I don't think it's super safe because you have to like florals. Not every guy likes florals because it is a very powdery flower scent. And the soapiness here isn't just from the iris, it's from Neroli. So it's a very white floral, powdery, soapy, dominant smell with a lot of supportive spices like pepper and cardamom that add a brightness spicy tone that cardamom really adds some brightness here there's lavender i believe as well so that kind of adds to the soapiness i want to say lavender's in here i could be mistaken but 
it's a nice fragrance through and through. When it comes to this scent profile, not too many can touch it. It's been dubbed like the king of the office and all that. I still think Versace Pour Homme is the safest of the office fragrances. Stuff I would deem as office fragrance anyways. I think that's the safest king of the office. But this one, if you're into florals, you like super soapy, you like spices, you like any of these things combined, this is one that if for some reason you haven't tried yet, you really, really should. It's so good. And it's understated with how well it performs. I know not everybody gets the same performance from every fragrance. I get that. But for me, this is a solid eight, even nine hour longevity fragrance. And it's pretty strong in the first two hours. Like this one can be oversprayed and be too much in my experience. Maybe it's just the way it reacts on my skin. Who knows? But this is actually understated for how strong it really is. I'm not going to say for most. I can only speak on my own personal experience, but it's a banger. For lack of a better term, that's a, that's a word that likes to get thrown around in this community, especially on the social media side of the fragrance community. But this is a banger. This is one of the better designer fragrances to ever be released. This kind of defined, this helped define making it that much more okay for guys to dive into florals more. I mean, this is what made me want to dive into the Dior Homme line, the old line full of different types of irises and so on. It's just great. God, this stuff smells so good. If you haven't tried it yet, you definitely should. It's Prada Lone. Quality, great performance, super, super green. This is the quintessential niche spring fragrance in my collection. It is Maison Francis Kirk John. This is Aqua Celestia Forte. I have raved about this one over the years. I've done a full review in my Versense battle with EQ on the Equality Fragrances channel. I brought this one up because it is magnificent. This is my favorite MFK fragrance. I have Grand Soir. I have a Discovery set with a variety, Oud, bo multiple versions, both versions of Oud Satin Mood, both versions of Baccarat Rouge, Gentle Fluidity, so on and so forth. There's a lot of really good stuff from this house, but this is my favorite. I'm so glad to have a bottle of this. I bought it blindly and don't regret it in the least. This Pettigrain note with this mint leaf is just so beautifully fresh green and herbaceous. A nice juicy lime that doesn't overtake the fragrance. Doesn't really add any sharpness, doesn't make it too juicy and watery. Complements the greenery very, very well. There's some soft woods here. There's a light floral heart, but it's mainly about the greens. This is a very color green evoking type of scent profile. Eight to 10 hours, easily in high heat on my skin. Works fine in the summer, but it really screams daytime spring weather for me. That mild, you know, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit range, I think is the most idealistic temperature to wear this fragrance, regardless of your attire. Great daytime wear, great casual wear, great work fragrance. Evenings out, it's not a bad situation at any given time to wear this. Signature scent worthy, to be honest with you, if you enjoy the scent profile that much. It's never a bad situation. It's strong enough to work in the cold as well if you just like fresh. But it's not run-of-the-mill fresh. Not full of synthetics. Very natural, high-quality smelling. It's just a gorgeous fragrance. Like I said, it's my favorite MFK fragrance. It's a beauty. You should really try this one if you haven't. Maison Francis Kirkjohn, Aqua Celestia Forte. So I can't stop talking about how much I like this fragrance. It's definitely become my favorite version of this scent profile in the line. We're talking about Polo Blue Parfum. The newest release in the Polo Blue line, timeless scent profile. I love Polo Blue. I love every version of Polo Blue. And this smells like the true parfum flanker. Deep Blue Parfum is a great fragrance, but it never smelled like it was the parfum version of the original scent profile, the Eau de Toilette, that watery cucumber, fresh greens, aquatics. This has all of that with this dark, rich, smoky, almost resinous and ambery type of feel, warm wood feel. It ties to the original's DNA. This smells like it fits perfectly as it's named. The Eau de Toilette, and then you have the Eau de Parfum, which does smell like a richer version of the Eau de Toilette. And this smells like the richer, darker version of the Eau de Parfum. So it's appropriate, I love it. Performance is great as far as longevity. Projection is on the more subdued side, kind of like how Blue de Chanel Parfum is that we spoke about a little while ago. I'm actually gonna spray this one on skin instead of out in the air, because I can just sit here and sniff on this one and enjoy it thoroughly. 
Um, it's nice that this has hit, hit discounters at this point. I picked this up at Joma Shop for $54 or $59 for the 75 ml. I don't remember exactly. I'll have links to everything down below. I'm a huge fan of this fragrance. This is one of my favorite pickups in a long time. Because I'm such a fan of the original's DNA. Polo Blue is one of the greatest and most iconic men's designer fragrance DNAs ever created. Heavily replicated. But when it comes to this Parfum Flanker, in my opinion, hands down, the best smelling one. And yes, even over Gold Blend. You know, we're talking about Ralph Lauren, Polo Blue Parfum. Fresh, zesty, tea, woods, a little watery, juicy fig. There's some complexity here. There's great performance. And for being as bright and fresh as this is, that's very impressive with Nishane's Wulong Cha. Another one I featured in that same Versace battle because this is an absolute banger. Actually, I think EQ beat me to it because I would have used it. He beat me to it. He used it before I did because he knew I was going to use it because I'm such a big fan of this fragrance. This is easily, easily the most easygoing best smelling everyday wear from the house over Hachivat, over b612 you name it i'll argue this smells better for a daily daily wear situation where you're just gonna you need something to work in every situation every day whether it's cold hot dressed up work t-shirt whatever this is that jam as as they're saying these days this fragrance this is him this is the one, I'm telling you. This is absolutely an experience that you need to have. I don't just think you should try it. I think you need to try it. Because for all the fresh fragrances that are out there, none of them quite have, or the better way to put this, none of them quite evoke the feeling of tranquility and happiness. The way this fragrance does. I know that's a little odd the way I explain it, but... If you get this one on skin and go on about your day, I bet you it lifts your mood. I bet it really brightens your day. From the moment you spray it on and smell that first whiff of the sillage coming off of your skin, I bet it brightens your day. This fragrance is that damn good. It smells that good. I stand by this one firmly. Definitely get a sample and try this one. This is an experience I think everybody should have. Men, women, doesn't matter. Perfectly unisex, phenomenal. We're talking about Wulong Cha, Nishan A. Last but not least, more of a timeless vintage masculine type of scent profile. Some will say it's more of Old Spice if it was a niche fragrance. I'm not going to argue with that because, yeah, it's similar for sure. Very similar. Uh, light years better than Old Spice. We're talking about Creed Viking. The original. Viking Cologne is nice. I have sampled that one on skin. Maybe one day I'll get it. But Viking, Col Viking the original... The pink pepper and mint combination shine here. Beautiful, sweet, spicy. It has kind of this heated feel to the spice while having this cooling effect at the same time from the citrus, the aromatics, mixing with this mint leaf. This mint leaf really has this refreshing feel to kind of really counterbalance the heat that comes, believe it or not, pink pepper, typically a sweet spice, more sweet than spice, has this radiant warm spicy tone to it it's very well blended this is my favorite creed fragrance over aventus over virgin island water royal oud i've tried so many of them uh green irish tweed i've tried a bunch of creeds for offerings this is my favorite for sure especially if you're the type that wants an assertive fragrance that's not in your face because this is an assertive powerful message type of scent profile like it commands respect it's a respectable scent profile um this this fragrance always exudes power to me power tie colors red the scent profile it evokes kind of this red spicy feel with brightness i could go on and on about why i say it's a power scent um without being overly powerful and surprising longevity i get every bit of eight hours on my skin it works with a t-shirt but it works really well as a daily wear business professional scent if you're wearing polo shirt golf shirt depending on your office setting sometimes you have that uniform golf shirt the polyester shirt with the company's name right here you guys know what i'm talking about a lot of you watching this that's what you wear to work um oxford's suits whatever have you this is that great daily signature that has an assertion to it, like I was saying before, without being overstated or very intrusive and aggressive. This is probably, it's, it's hard to say, 
but I'm just going to say it. It's probably my favorite masculine niche fragrance that I would consider a great every day wear. Pricey per ml if you're going to wear it every single day, but this is one that can really encapsulate the essence of someone. It's, like I said, it's a power fragrance for sure. Beautiful stuff, definitely sample worthy. It's the original Creed Viking. Well, that's the 10 that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. Of these 10 choices, what have you tried? How do you feel about them, the ones you have tried? What of these have you yet to get your nose on? I'm telling you, everything in this video, absolutely sample worthy at minimum. Uh, some are great mass appealing everyday wares. Some are higher quality niche everyday wares that can really be a great signature for someone. But all of these, the thing in common, they all smell phenomenal. And until next time, I will see if you get your hands on any of these 10 that I featured here in this video. And you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Because you're going to smell fantastic. Have a good one, guys.